Mage hand me the bread. It's time for another crit sandwich. Welcome to Crit Sandwich. On Crit Sandwich, four friends play 5th edition D&D loosely based on our favorite movies, TV shows, and video games. Each season, we randomly roll for new scenarios. You can hear us do just that in a bonus episode that came out this very day. For this, our seventh campaign, we are soldiers in a wizardocracy playing through the plot of Big Trouble in Little China. My name is Casey Sears. To my left, our dungeon master, Chuck Ventus. Y'all waited two years for this. You're about to find out why. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Across the table from me, Robbie Ponder. <laughs> Hello. And to my right, the venerable... Matt Popich. Venerable? Venerable. Vener- venerable. I'd have to look at that, that up. Means like what it means like oldish, I think, and like wise. Yeah. Okay. Venerable. I think so. Venerable. venerable. Yeah. Yeah. I, that. I, I think it's cool that I corrected you. Yeah. In a <laughs> that was very way. venerable of <laughs> it you. It was. Yeah. yeah. Excited to be here, Casey. Thank you so much. So uh, we have seen Chuck DM for, lo- for us personally, us as human beings, us as players. Right. Yeah. I think we did like a couple like side sessions seven years. Was, I don't know. Whenever we first sick. started playing Long D&D. Yeah, yeah. Someone was sick and come to the session. Chuck had like some some things. And we played it like a little a little bit, a little a little mm-hmm. side story kind of thing. Uh, but you have not DM'd in many, many years. Oh, yeah. And you have not DM'd something this big <laughs> right. for the public. That's I'm not excited like anybody's for listening, right? You yep. Know. Zero yeah. people listen, just their moms. Just yeah. you guys. Yeah. So. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm nervous, anxious, but excited at the same time. So take I, it away, man. I, it's all yours. I feel yeah. like we set you up for success. Being being season number seven, it's lucky. I like guess, we we've right? got them hooked mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, Anybody yeah. still here may may give you a break or two. So yeah. It's fine. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And keep, if you keep, yeah, keep them reviews coming in, please. <laughs> yeah, if you can't tell from Chuck's voice, he's a little under the weather. I know it's a perfect debut. day for me to get a sore throat when I'm DMing. When you talk the most, right? We're gonna push through it, and uh, we're gonna have some fun with it. So, but yeah, let's just dive right into it. As the camera zooms down from a starlit sky towards the world, we see a vast and endless ocean stretching as far as the eye can see. For a time, there is calm amongst the sea. Yet as we push east through the sky, we are soon met with dark clouds overhead and waves crashing down on one another as a storm heads east. The camera pushes through the storm and travels for a distance we then see the sunrise begin to crest the horizon. Looking down as the sun shines and glimmers off the water, our eyes are soon met with land stretching across the world. And then we see it. Rays of sunlight shoot down upon a city resting on the western coast of the world. Welcome to the Golden Gate. Your sickness is in your voice and it makes it sound really great it's though. probably gonna make <laughs> me sound less annoying so i think it's i think this intro sounds sexy <laughs> all right yeah just you wait as we see the city of golden gate we see an island that is resting along the western coast connecting the city to the mainland is a long bridge made of solid gold at the center of the city we see a large golden tower that is surrounded with lightning crackling around it Hovering around the tower, we can see golden plates shifting and swirling around the tower. Surrounding the tower, we see what we would know as large trees, which are redwoods. Surrounding that is a golden wall. There's lots of gold, guys. Mm -hmm. A lot of surrounding, a lot of gold. (laughs) A golden wall with similar features to the tower. This is the home of the Wizard King. Magic is a known substance in this world, so everyone is born with some sense of magical abilities. However, not everyone is all-powerful. The only people that are born with true, raw, magical abilities are wizards. So with the, the Tower of the Wizard King, like when you see a structure like this, it is very highly advanced compared to other parts of the city and the world itself. When you travel like other cities that are located in the world, wizards are very much in power across those those areas and they rule over cities. Wizards themselves are just so rare that when you come in contact with one, it's a very big deal. 
So like the wizards, their little towers that has it's full with it's filled with technology. Is that because like the wizards have the magic to power that technology, or is it like I have the technology and I'm not I don't want to give it to you people? Well, it depends on the wizard that's ruling over the city. So technology magic is a tech based thing. So your tech that's in the world is driven through the power that's given by the wizard that is in that rules over the city. So the thing, like how well your city is doing is based off of the power of the wizard that is in control. And are wizards, like, bo- they're born that way? So, like, some people are just born with way more power than the rest? And yes. Is it, is it random or is it, like, genetic? It's genetic, Okay, I would say. So, so like, families typically, like, if I knock up a wizard and I'm a wizard, there's a pretty good chance that'll be a wizard a, baby. It's not guaranteed, but there's a chance that that child can be born with that raw ability. Or someone could have a recessive gene and like several generations in, all of a sudden be a wizard in a family. Absolutely, yeah. And it, it doesn't matter their race at all? It does not matter their race, okay. no. So all the cities have a wizard king? Or is there like one main wizard king and then like other wizards in like other cities? Other cities, they have their own kings or, or wizards that are in rule, depending on how they run the city. But yeah, wizards are in, are in control. It could be a small, like usually when places start off like when a, a wizard travels somewhere they start a settlement becomes a small little town and then it grows into a city so this is a huge okay. a huge city so this wizard um he's obviously been around for a while he's very power considered he's considered one of the most powerful wizards in the world so that's why this this you can see like the technology just from his tower uh, alone so when a wizard shows up to a place and like sets up a community and everything like it really does revolve around them yeah okay mm-hmm. And I guess some are good, some are bad. Some, some, are, yeah. some are good, some are bad, yeah. Yeah, so just a bunch of city-states with wizard kings, I'm picturing. Cool. And is our guy known good as good or bad? He's known as good. Yay! Yay! Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nothing's going wrong here. No. Just around the wizard tower, you can see very large. You can see a very large and diverse city. So in this city, you see humans, gnomes, dwarves, elves. So you can see loxodons. It's a basically any civilized race from the player's handbook you're going to see that in the city uh and but when you look at this portion of the city it's a very industrial sort of like steampunk vibe it it doesn't have like all the tech that is surrounding the the wizard king's tower but it is still very advanced with like the uh the technology and stuff As our story continues, we push beyond the city over the Golden Bridge to the east, where we are met with a dirt road moving through a forest. In the distance, we can see a cloud of dust being kicked up into the air by a large big rig construct. Or I'm going to use this joke, what I like to call a cons truck. So, (laughs) (laughs) So, cogs and gears line the side of the vehicle with a beam of hard light lining the edges. Moving from the back of the construct towards the front, we see a black trailer with two large golden G's on the side being pulled by a large cabin section that is lined with two front seats and a very large third seat just behind them. Here, we see three recruits driving the construct to the east. And what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and describe your guys' characters. I'll go ahead and say that, Matt, uh, your character, you are sitting in the large seat in the back. I assumed as much. Yeah. So we'll start off, uh, Robbie, to my left. Why don't you go ahead and describe your uh, your character, sir? Are you driving this, or are you? Uh... Uh, so my, ca- I'm a gunslinger. I would not be driving. If anything, I would be the guy looking and scanning around everything, just looking at everything, see if there's. I don't think there would be a threat to for me to scan. So I would probably just be twiddling my fingers in the passenger seat. So my character, I am a human. I am my class is a gunslinger. I am 21 years old. My background I took as a far traveler. So I look like I, I think we're all in the same kind of military uniform. I do have some armor plates on mine that are pretty lightweight. Uh, my left arm is basically covered in armor and then my right arm is not. For that way I can fire my sniper rifle. So my, I'm just a foreigner. So picture a foreigner. Maybe a mix of Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite and Danny Trejo. 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 Danny Trejo. I like that. Trejo. Oh, man. Gosh. 
Here we go. <laughs> Classic. That's a big mix. That's like a wildly different mix. It's like, okay, yeah. So my, wait, hold on, hold on. Before we get too far in this, have you ever taken a Spanish class or no. yeah. known anyone? <laughs> Spanish? No. no. <laughs> so I'm um, just think foreigner. Don't don't focus too much on uh, like a Spaniard. Don't focus too much on Spanish. an outsider to the to the main portion of the world. He's from somewhere know. ambiguous down south. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I'm a little I, nervous. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're going to offend someone. Too. I'm a little Where nervous. Going? All right. We'll see. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to shorten down my character introduction, but it just keeps getting I was longer. nervous before, not anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just a foreigner from outside of a town, like in, or like in the woods or in a rural area where, with my family. And I was hiking one day, and I seen a statue, and I like to blow things up. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to blow this statue up. And then when I, I blew it up, and I found out I was got in trouble for blowing it up because it was a statue of the wizard king so then i found out this whole whole new city and so i'm like oh i want to go explore it so i decided to go and join the military and explore this new city and wondrous world to me that is new and full of adventures and beautiful things the- R- robbie very cool uh, the end robbie <laughs> <laughs> never change yeah, yeah now it's, <laughs> now it's become a thing it's definitely right. a thing at this point i like it and you, you, your character's name is Carlos de la Car- Cruz. Carlos de la Cruz. Did de I la really Cruz. not say that part? You got you to gotta really roll your R with the, the de, de la, la Cruz. Cruz. La Cruz. All right. And you're riding shotgun. Correct? Yes, riding okay. shotgun. All right. Uh, I do have a, a rifle case with me, too. So we'll talk about that later. Okay. This is a complete side story, but I have a cousin named Carlos, and he's just like a very, you know, Caucasian, white guy, reddish hair. And I did not even know Carlos was like a, a Spanish a Spanish name mm-hmm. until I was probably like twenty five. That's awesome. Carlos is uh, Chuck in Spanish. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that what you were I in Spanish Carlos. class? Your I Carlos was uh, class? Car- Carlitos. Oh, little Carlitos, Chuck. Little Chuck. So, there you know. Little fact about me. So. All right. Moving across the table as we we move to the back of the construct, we see our next character. Matt, you want to go and describe your character? Yeah. So I'm a loxodon, which is like a elephant human, but more on the elephant side. But I do stand upright. Just thick, leathery, grayish brown skin, big elephant ears and trunk. And if that wasn't intimidating enough, full set of chainmail armor all around. I, I carry a massive shield that has like a weeping face on it. And as I sit there, you, uh, it, it's, I'm kind of like resting on it a little bit. I'm a little bit older for a Loxodon. And Loxodon are, are just like known for their calm strength and, and like sereneness. So sitting in the back of a, a truck, I would likely be just like very slowly closing my eyes and thinking and then opening them every once in a while just to observe around and then, and then move them back. Not necessarily like sleeping, but and just kind of absorbing everything with my with my senses other than my eyesight. I also carry a quarter staff, which is tied to my back. My main feature is my shield and my massive girth. I'm about eight feet tall and four hundred pounds. Just huge boy. Yeah, and this is this is a tight squeeze for you inside of this uh, this cabin. So, and I'd imagine I'm I'm pretty used to that. Um, as far as not much can contain contain go jimbo <laughs> what was go jimbo's reason for joining uh, so he's a military his... man his background is in the is a soldier and he does so because he's he's a paladin he believes in law and order and he's a protector of people so he did so in the respect of again you don't just like hurt or kill like thieves and things you you arrest them and and help them rehabilitate so he basically just wanted to be a part of the law of the city. Very cool. All right. And then as we move on driving this big rig, we see our third character, Casey. This, so this is Casey. I am Kurt Carpenter. I am a forest gnome. I am an artificer and engineer in this battalion. My job is the vehicles and maintaining all of the technology. And you actually see me like standing next to the driver's seat and I have my feet and legs attached to some gears and some other contraptions that go all the way down to the pedals on the floor and there's levers. I'm pulling some levers around. I'm, I'm 
grabbing the wheel. I'm, I'm moving my feet up and down as I am controlling uh, this big rig down the road. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a tiny little guy. I have a wispy, like a wispy bad mustache. Like I can't quite grow a mustache yet. Like it's just a real, like a crustache. Um, <laughs> a crustache. And dark brown hair, some goggles, just lots of gizmos and gadgets and uh, like grenades and other things like that attached to me. Lots of packet, lots of pockets, belts, straps, large backpack. Just a, a lot of a lot of gear, a lot of equipment, wrenches, tools. Awesome, very cool. Uh, what was your uh, character's reason for joining, uh, becoming a protector of the Golden Gate? Uh, so I come from a fairly large family, and many of them serve the Wizard King as engineers, tailors, chefs. Uh, a lot of people, kind of you know, pretty pretty close to the big picture. All right. As we continue down the road, we can hear music playing in the background inside the cabin. The music, which is coming from a sending stone that is built into the dash, of course, uh, is then interrupted by a voice playing a message. Is this like a... It's like a radio, basically. So it's not (laughs) like a playing the voice. They're actually communicating to us. Yeah, it's just playing a message like over the the dash. But I I can reply if I need to, right? Do you talk to the radio when you're in your car? Like this isn't a person like if on you're a walkie in the mili- talkie with you. This if is you're like in the you military, to- you have you talk on the radio. If <laughs> this you're is in the you. Military. This is you listening to like Q102. Oh, or something okay. Like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was thinking it was like if we're soldiers, I was thinking we we're in the military. And it was like our lieutenant or something giving us orders. Okay. Yeah. So it's just we're listening to the radio jamming. Got you. Yeah. How about this morning, folks? Nothing beats waking up to this fabulous weather we have here at the Gold Gate. Although it does look like we might be experiencing some stormy weather just approaching from the west today. As we look forward to this day, folks, uh, in case you've forgotten, today marks the 100th anniversary of that civil war that almost ripped apart the Golden Gate. Had our great, powerful savior, the Wizard King, not cursed and banished that bastard David into the great beyond, well, let's just say you wouldn't get to hear my fine voice this morning. And let's go ahead and roll a dice. Uh, why don't you let's get the the dice rolling? Why don't you guys roll a history check to see what you know about the the Civil War uh, that happened a hundred years ago? Thirteen minus one, twelve. Huh. We are level three, folks. <laughs> Carlos got a nine. Kurt got an eighteen. Very good. All right. Everyone everyone knows about like some information about the Civil War, but like Kurt, you would definitely know that the Civil War was caused by an uprising from an evil wizard human by the name of David. He basically uh, wanted to create genocide by killing off all magic users that were not human. So anyone that's not human, he was like, I'm going to kill you and get you out of here. He had like a sick, like he was sick mentally in the head where sometimes he would take captives and kind of torture them by putting them in an area and making them think that they were escaping but setting up traps and stuff for them and watching them kind of suffer as they perished i mean you guys would all kind of know that 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 this is the thing uh he was defeated obviously by the wizard king it basically in the battle their armies met on the field both the wizard king and david fought one another as uh their beams of the spells that they were casting created a huge ball of energy in the center of them but the wizard king overpowered david and basically blew him blew him to smithereens to the point where there was no body or anything no one knew where he was could not find any remnants of him casey here with a question yep is the makeup of the populace are we is it mostly humans and then the other races are kind of minorities or is it so actually humans are the minorities okay because a lot of the soldiers from David's side of the army were just humans. And there were still humans on the Wizard King's side, but there were also other races that were fighting against it. And so a lot of the humans were like killed off, but humans are the minority here at the Golden Gate. Okay. How long ago did that happen? A hundred years ago. Okay. And then Casey, you would know this, uh, or you've heard this as a rumor, just you would know this, Mm -hmm. that there was an ancient prophecy that David was trying to fulfill. They were saying that he needed to marry and sacrifice a woman with green eyes in order to become all powerful. Okay. But you guys wouldn't know that because you didn't fucking roll well. So <laughs> Or pay attention in or school. Or pay attention in history class. Yeah. I'm a foreigner. I don't know if I went to that history <laughs> class. It's all new to you. Homeschooled. All right. 
The message continues. Speaking of the Wizard King, I can't stop thinking about the upcoming wedding to his lovely fiance. I think everyone will agree that she will make a fine queen. But enough from me. Let's tune back into some fine bardic inspirational jams. Topping the charts again, the duet that's sweeping the world. Here's Never Gonna Love You More Than Myself, sang by Jackson King and Reed Hartman. I saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my ode to past you. campaigns, so. Never gonna love so, Robbie, you. you can start working on that song. So. More than myself. Never gonna <laughs> love you. More than myself. It's very catchy. <laughs> Sounds like something from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> just when, just when uh, Kurt sings it. Yeah. So at this point, sending stones that I'm, I'm actually giving you guys an item right now so you can add this to your inventory. At this point, the, the, music, the message on the radio is cut off by sending stones that are on our characters that are wrapped around their neck chime with a familiar voice. It's Captain Ron. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what? Captain Ron's a Kurt Russell uh, character from another movie. Ah, cool. And he's a captain, so. <laughs> Home base to the GG boys, do you read me? This is the GG boys, over. Who's that, De La Cruz? Roger, this is De La Cruz, over. Do you hear me, Zarelia? Carpenter? Yeah, we're here, over. Yeah, I'll open my eyes for a second and look down and say, here, here, Zorelia, here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, listen up. This is a secure link that myself and each of you can communicate on. I've just been informed that today's transportation detail won't be your typical rodeo. Pretty sure it's a mistake. Not exactly sure how you greenhorns were chosen for this detail. Either way, we've got a tight window this morning, so let's be sharp and get the job done. Check the cargo box up front for mission details. I checked the cargo box for mission details. I said to my party members, oh, this is kind of weird, don't you guys think so? We are, <laughs> we are given an order, and we shall comply. Mm-hmm. I uh, know, that's why I'm reaching for the box. Casey, every time I hear your character, I'm going to think, Ernie! What? <laughs> from Ernie, uh, uh, Bert and Ernie from uh, Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. We were just talking about Sesame Street. <laughs> Ernie! So I go to the box, and I open the box. All right, you find... In the cargo box, a blank piece of parchment. As you hold the parchment, words slowly start to materialize on the sheet with mission details. I hand them to the superior officer. I hand them to Jimbo in the back. I'm like, there are words appearing on this paper. I take the paper and I read it. All right. As you read it, it says mission detail. Wizard King fiance transport. Travel to the GGTC for retrieval, which you guys would know. The GGTC stands Golden for Tower. Golden Gate Teleportation Damn. Circles. You're okay. close. So. <laughs> so that would be to Gojimbo, who typically is like calm, serene, doesn't really let anything affect his uh, presence at all. He it would he would kind of raise his eyebrows a little bit like, interesting. Like that's kind of a, seems like a kind of a big deal for, especially for us. So I will tell the other two. Head to the GGTC. I'd spin that wheel. Kurt continues to drive the construct. More words appear on the mission detail. Escort the Wizard King's fiance to the construct and secure her in the back trailer. Transport the future queen to the Wizard King's tower. Don't lose the truck. It's expensive. And if any danger were to present itself, protect the future queen at all costs. How cozy is it in the back of our truck? You guys don't know. On the back trailer, there are no doors to it from what you can see. Hmm. You know that there is, when you, when you guys are picking up cargo, it typically will open up from the side when the cargo approaches the vehicle. So it's, it has like a, a sensor on it that knows when whatever, it needs to, whatever needs to be transported, it opens up for you. But typically, like when you guys put stuff in there, it is just like the back of a truck. is just nothing back mm -hmm. there. I'm more concerned about the rain than I am picking up this bride of the Wizard King. Did you guys hear that it's going to rain? And then I pat my rifle case. Don't worry, Rim. I will keep you dry. I haven't said anything about the mission, so you didn't know that. But. <laughs> I assumed you shared it with us. <laughs> I, I didn't. You just said head to the GGTC. That's all I said. Well, 
I he could still I say saw it. Fine, the, I tell you. The words appear <laughs> to appear to me before I handed you the note, and that's what I was going off of. Is I the tell you, fine. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Fucked it up, Robbie. I'm just kidding. Oh, wait. The queen? We get to transport the queen? The future queen, most likely. I, I need you both to calm down. This was given to us for a reason. What the are... fuck? I am calm. If your superior officer is talking and you interrupt one more time, the law will have to be put into place. Do you understand, private? Uh, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> your superior. Are, are you an officer or are you uh, like an NCO? Do you, are you uh, a sergeant? Sergeant. 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 I say, yes, sergeant. Okay. I'm happy to see that you're awake and not back there daydreaming for once, as I'd be a smartass to you. I understand you're excited, but we need to keep our eyes on the prize. We have a job to do. All right. A little trouble in the ranks there. Okay, so you guys travel down the dirt road. The storm is approaching from the west as you guys travel east, so it is coming up behind you. You guys arrive at the GGTC. It is a fairly large cobblestone structure in the shape of a rectangle that's big enough to house, you know, probably roughly around two to 300 people. There are horses and wagons and other magical constructs that can be seen waiting just to the outside of the structure and what's in a sort of stable garage structure. So you guys pull the, uh, the big rig into the, uh, the, the garage structure and Park it inside. Uh, do you guys want to do anything before you head inside, or do I want to know? Do, do we have e any reason to suspect that she would be a target for any groups? Like, is there an underground group that doesn't like the king or anything like that? There are sympathi uh, sympathizers. Oh my gosh, sympathizers. You got it. Yeah, synthesizers. Right, sympathizers. Yeah. I'm just kidding. There, <laughs> there are symp sympathizers which do cause riots within the city. Every now and then, they're sympathizers of David. Sometimes those are, you know, they you have those every once in a while, like markings of him and stuff. And okay, so not like, outright like punks and stuff right. that could be a threat, but there's not really like any threats. It's typically like a very peaceful like area and stuff. All right, but you would have no reason to suspect that she would be in any danger. But usually, like whenever it comes to like traveling and stuff, like. It is kind of weird that you guys just have, you're randomly transporting her for some reason. Yeah. So, okay. But like to our knowledge, for the most part, there shouldn't be any reason that someone wants to like kill her. Not from what you would know. Okay. Wow. What a day. <laughs> if anything, it would be more likely that we are doing this mission because it's just so random of an escort that the synthesizers out there would never have thought that we would have the wizard queen with us. Indeed, maybe that is part of our superior strategy. But in any case, we shall do our diligence and make sure that she is transported safely. Keep your eyes open. Aye, aye. So when you guys enter the building, the first thing that you see lining the back wall are three large glowing teleportation circles that are standing vertically. Each circle is lined with cogs and gears similar to the inside of a clock. The gears can be visibly be seen moving in sync and briefly pause for a moment just before someone walks into and walks out of the circle. This is like a Stargate situation. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. Like a, if it's upright. Mm -hmm. You can also tell that there are so many people in this area. It's difficult to make out exactly like where and which uh, circle that the Wizard King's fiance might be coming out of. You guys don't exactly know. You just know that she's going to be coming out of one of these teleportation circles. This is Carlos. I'll go ahead and prep the truck for her to enter in. What do I need to do? Like open some hatches. I'll get like a stepping stool out and I'll put it there for her to step into the back of the truck. You don't have a stepping stool and you have no way of prepping the back trailer area because okay. you need the cargo in order to, in order for the trailer, the trailers, it, think of it as like a smart trailer. It will react to when the cargo arrives at the truck. Okay. So I'll get out of the truck, then I'll walk around it and expect the truck to make sure it's going to be ready for its journey to its new destination. Okay, so you do this before you head into the, the building? Yes, I'm going to okay. double check the truck. Preventive maintenance. There you go. So also another thing about this uh, feature, the room, it's a rectangular room. It is divided in half by a cobblestone wall that is about waist high. 
Uh, and there are also three arches just in front of each uh, teleportation circle for people to pass and go through. However, the half of the room that the teleportation circles are on, there is a, you guys can see a purple haze glowing in that room. And the only people that are in that side of the room are, you can see them visibly carrying pieces of parchment, which you guys would think are like in an airport, like airline tickets or something like that. So it is not the parchment that you just got for your mission detail. But everyone on the other side from where you enter in at is standing there perfectly safe. Also into the building, you can see a gnome wearing a light blue GGTC uniform that can be seen helping a group of dwarves just inside the structure and pointing to the gate on the far right. And then you just then you see the dwarves can be seen heading in that direction to the portal, carrying papers. All right? Mm -hmm. What do you guys want to do? And we're all out of the truck at this point. You're out of the truck. You're in there. Yeah, you see this gnome. He looks like he's the only person that you see like that is a uniform worker. He's helping people, seems to be helping people like find where they need to go and stuff. I follow my captain. Yeah, I will say... Carlos, see if you can gather some information from that gnome fellow there. Yes, Sergeant. I will grab my rifle case and I will go to the gnome. Uh, well, well hi there. Um, uh, do you need any help uh, traveling? Uh, my name's Gizmo. Are you uh, are you expecting someone? Or are you departing somewhere? We are expecting someone. Oh, um, where uh, where do the where do the, they come in at? Well, oh, what? Uh, let let me check here. Uh, so most likely came in on a private plane or something. <laughs> So you see him pull out a um, like a clipboard. Um, who who are you expecting? I I kind of just stare at him, and I say, the most very important person on your list. Um. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you see him kind of run through the uh, the list, and he's I right when if he says any names, I'm going to tell him shh. I don't, oh. want him, I don't want him saying any names out loud. Okay. Um, how do you want me to communicate this with you? Where do we need to go for the pickup? Okay. Um, he writes down uh, a name on there, but it is a, it says uh, Jackson King on there. This Jackson King is a man of no importance. So it was somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> But that is the that he he's not supposed to arrive for a while. Uh, he's actually it seems like he's kind of late. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the clipboard from him. Oh, okay. You just kind of rip it out of his hands. Yeah, sure. Okay. Make a strength saving throw. You trying to do it fast or are you trying to do it? Hard? I'm doing. What are you trying to do? What it what it fast. Do? Either slide a hand or strike. Yeah, okay, They're slide a hand. Do a slide of hand. Yeah, I'm a dex character, so twenty. All right, I rolled a three, so you you kind of take it out of his hands, like uh, sir, that's it. It's private private information there. And I'm going to look for anything on there about uh, the Wizard King's Bride. Okay. You do not see her name on the list. What is her name? Her, we... her name is Maeve. All right. I would know and that. Would I know that from the you, note? You would know her name. Her name is Maeve, M-A-E-V-E. -E. You do not see her name on this list. You kind of gather the thought like, okay, maybe this is uh, like a secret information and the w Wizard King does not want people knowing that his wa future wife is traveling to and from. <laughs> in a typical like teleportation circle drop for protection purposes. Look him dead in the eyes and then drop his clipboard on the ground and walk away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I'll, <laughs> as so I, mean. as I move the clipboard <laughs> forward to hand it to him and he starts reaching for it, I just drop it and I, and then I, I come back to my sergeant, your staff sergeant, uh, right, Matt? Yep. Okay. I go back to my staff sergeant. As, as you walk away, he'll say, uh, uh, hopefully if you have any questions, um, about the area, um, I'll be here. What did you find out for us, Carlos? You know who is not on the list of arrivals. They must be using a code name. This is a lot harder than I thought it was to come here and pick her up. You know, I just think in in general, maybe um maybe um we should treat you know the general populace with uh, uh more respect. Um, is you know just maybe. And I'm looking at Carlos as I'm saying that. Keep. Our thoughts on the mission, little one. No, okay, 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 okay. That's right. You are very little. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Look at you, just real cross. Like, yeah. What? You got something against gnomes, human? Huh, human? You don't like gnomes? Is you got something against humans? Uh, it sounds like you got a you got a little beef here. 
You think humans are better than everyone else? Do you see how rude that airport guy was to me? He seemed fine to me. He was very rude. All right. <laughs> okay. So I drew a picture of you get for you guys so that you can kind of see what how the GGTC is set up. Mm-hmm. So where you guys enter in at, you enter in down here. Okay. To the south. Yeah. And those circles at the top, those are your three teleportation circles. See that, Robbie? Yep. All right. Uh, there and then are you have three your three circles toward the north. Three circles to, to towards the north, all lining the back wall. And then dividing that room in half, you have your cobblestone wall. That is waist high, and you have your three arches in front of each teleportation circle. They're roughly about 30 feet in length, and there are people just like going in and out of there, and they can all be seen carrying papers. Should we just each wait by one of the gates and wait for her? Split up? I like your suggestion, Private. You take the west one, Carlos take the east, and I shall watch the center. Be on the lookout. Do we all know what she looks like? Yeah, so uh, you guys don't know what she'll be wearing, basically, but you would recognize her. She is a human. Uh, She has brunette hair, and she has... Sorry, this is weird for me to say, but she has eyes that are uh, of creamy jade color. (laughs) Sorry, it's from the movie. It's really weird when he's... (laughs) (laughs) Creamy jade eyes. Creamy jade eyes eyes of creamy jade. It's very rare, by the way. Not many people have green eyes. I also, just to kind of give you a heads up, just to kind of symbolize, like, not many people want to get close to the arches that do not have papers for a specific reason, but someone was a dick to the gnome guy, so Mm -hmm. you might not know why exactly. But you do see a purple haze glowing on the northern half of the room, (laughs) so. All right. Uh, I'll let you guys, why don't you go ahead and roll an arcana check? Yeah, I was about to say, we probably know how You might know how this works already. Eight. Seventeen. Seven. All right. So the person that was a jerk to the gnome <laughs> pays off. It anyway. Pays off. Pays off to be a jerk. Carlos, you would know that the northern half of the room where the purple haze is is a spell. It's an enchantment on that on that side of the room. So anyone that is not authorized to enter that area, so anyone not carrying proper paperwork to travel through a teleportation circle or people who are arriving, basically a spell will be cast on them where it will cast hold person on any creature that enters the area and it will also cast levitate on them to hurl them up into the air so as you kind of look up you do see like two three people just kind of like floating stiff as a board just kind of floating in the air not moving that's fun it just like pops them up yeah so you're i mean it sucks to be them what is there no system to get them down or what well (laughs) so I'll just go ahead and tell you, but like the gnome guy, the only worker there, he uh-huh. he is in charge of uh, taking care of those people at, at after hours. You'd think so. It, you'd think they'd get somebody taller, <laughs> right? All right. So they just hang out there all day until like he's ready to come get them. Yep. Damn. Oh, that's not nice. Can I do a perception check to see if any of those are the queen? Absolutely. Yeah. Why don't you? And also, you can all make perception checks because that's the next thing I was going to have you do. So I would like to put on my eyes of the eagle item which is my binoculars, basically. I will go into position, like Jimbo said, and I will go to the east, and I will try to stand on something, and I will bring down my binoculars, and I will have advantage on wisdom perception checks. I got a 19 without advantage. Oh, man. Rolled crampy. Carlos, with my binoculars on, I have a 11. Kurt got a 10 for perception. All right. So, Matt, you, you see this. Because with there being just so many people in the room, uh, you notice that there are five suspicious characters that enter the... Oh, first off, you notice that the queen, the future queen, is not one of the people up in the air. Mm. Okay. You also see five suspicious characters enter the facility and sort of spread out. You can see that one of them, who appears to be a taller human, seems to be like the, the leader of this group. He kind of motions two guys to go to the west circle and then the other two to go to the the eastern circle. And he kind of stands around the center area with you. Are they all humans? They're all humans. Yeah. Uh, uh, good Good thing I don't profile. So yeah. it doesn't affect me at all that they're all humans. <laughs> so even though I know humans are bad guys. They're wearing black jerkins and they also have red sashes and bandanas just kind of on their armor. Uh, and they can all be seen wearing these like really bizarre goggles, kind of like cogs and wheels, kind of like floating around the uh, the rim of the, the goggles. Would I know what that garb 
signifies at all? Like, is that like a known gang or band or? Make a history check. 13. You would kind of know that this garb could possibly, these guys could possibly be sympathizers of David. Okay. Well, I want to use my sending stone. Yeah. To contact the other two and inform them. Keep your eyes peeled. I see five humans with sympathizer garb. Two coming toward each of you. So as soon as I hear this, I would throw out on the floor in front of me a small hexagonal box and kind of wave my hand in front of it. And it just starts unfolding and like gears and everything starts spinning and whirling. And then next thing you know, it's a full medium sized crab like walking turret with a large crane like neck. And I climb onto the back of it and then kind of up onto the neck so I can be at least human height level looking around the crowd as I'm surveying. Very good. Okay. And I'm going to have both Casey and Robbie. I want you guys to make, and actually, Matt, you can make one more perception check as well. Uh, I want you guys to make perception checks just to see if you can see these guys moving into the crowd. I got a 10 again. I keep rolling sevens. 15, 23. Are All right. They rolled really shitty. I rolled a four. So you guys can, after, once uh, Gojimbo like, gives a signal, you guys can see, make out where these guys are in the crowd. You can see exactly like where they are and stuff and see their actions. And Matt, uh, I'll also use uh, your perception check from the, before, the role that you rolled before. Coming out of the center arch, you see the Wizard King's fiance pass through a teleportation circle carrying her papers with her. And she is headed towards the center area and at the same time you do see the leader of the suspicious group kind of grab his chest area and mumble some words and you can kind of see the other guys close in on the area so just paint another word picture here just set the stage she's coming out of the middle which one did they come out of again so he is you have two guys on each side or two guys because they came where we came from they came from the same area Came from the entrance area. They oh, so they came out. in. Sorry, yeah. I thought they came through it again. No, no, no. They came in from the, the area where you guys came okay, from, from gotcha. outside. So is is it... I'm assuming we're kind of like in a fantasy airport. If I pull out a, uh, my sniper rifle here, is it going to make people panic? Or like, should I just keep it stowed? <laughs> I guess you'll find out. What do you want to do? So the queen to be just came out? She just came out and she is headed... Does uh, she have anyone towards with you. her? She's no. by herself. Bodyguards, nothing? She's by herself. All right, She's and on... I'm in the middle one. You are in the center well, I'd say this is with on me, this then. tall guy. Yeah. So you can see her moving where's straight he, towards where's you. Where's he at comparatively? Uh, he is sort of behind you, closer towards the entrance of the facility. So I have a, I had a 23 on my perception check, so I, I assume I see the princess as well. The, the future wizard. You would see her as well, yeah. Okay. So as... Jimbo starts to move forward. I will get on my communicator and I will tell him, do not touch the purple haze. Do not touch the purple haze over. You, and then the four guys that are closing in on him to like, uh, yeah, I'm going to yell. Maeve, you're in danger. Run to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she, you get the sense that she knows that you guys are there to pick her up. And she starts running to you immediately. Just at that moment. I'm going to pull out my sniper rifle. Uh, you, okay. <laughs> uh, people start scattering yeah, uh, amongst the crowd. They start running out through the entrance. You see some people run in the wrong direction through the, the purple haze. And they start getting launched into the air <laughs> from a panic. But she is running straight towards you. And as she does, you can see one of the, the thugs run up and grab her. Let's have everybody roll initiative. I wrote a seven. I've rolled three sevens in a row here. This is crazy. Go Jimbo got a 19. Well, Casey, you know, I'm rolling really shitty with my good die. I rolled a two. Oh, all so right. So I'll take, I have these a guys 10. are going to be going last. Pretty sure. I have a 10 for initiative. All right. So chaos ensues. <laughs> people are running all over the place. You have people running in all sorts of different directions. We have Go Jimbo yelling to the future queen Maeve. Maeve, run to me. Uh, she starts running. One of the thugs grabs her. I assume since we're in the middle column, that was the one closest to me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're in the middle column. So, and then what was the order again? What'd you guys roll? I got a 19. That was Gojimbo. What do you got? What'd you have, Robbie? An eight. And you had a... Casey as Kurt had a 10. 
Hey yeah. everybody, it's Matt. <laughs> I'm gonna at some point. Our plan was to do it when someone is slow at fighting, but we'll just go ahead and do it now. While Chuck's uh, writing down initiative while, scores. While Chuck's getting us ready here for the combat, we're going to start reading a review. We have gotten a ton lately, and that is because we begged last time, and many people said in their messages, sorry you had to beg, so don't worry about it. Uh, we didn't know that that would actually work, so thank you to everybody. And if you would like to have your name read at some point, feel free to leave us a review. I'm going to start with Aaron the Wiz. Aaron the Wiz says, sorry you had to beg. He said, been listening to the show forever. You guys are seriously awesome. Been waiting for every Monday with bated breath since season one. That is so freaking flattering. Uh, you guys have a great flow. And when I listen to your show, I feel like I'm sitting right there at the table with you. You guys are run such fun sessions and inspire me for my own. Keep up the amazing work. P.S. Sorry you had to beg. E.P.S. Just got an Apple device to leave a review here. So... Yeah, these reviews are on <laughs> Apple Podcasts, where we're trying to gain, gain more traction. We are. And actually, big news on that front. Casey said, if you're using the desktop version. Mm -hmm. You show up on the, the, we show up on the first page. The first you put page. in D&D &D or D and D. Yeah, that's, that's for me, oh, that's wow. big news. That's I know. Awesome. So thank you so much. And Aaron the Wiz, thank you. And everybody else, I will, we, we're going to start doing this once an episode, so. Thank you to everyone that has left a review in the past. We'll, we'll try to catch up on them. All right, Chuck, tell us initiative. All right, so we got an initiative order. We got Matt at the top, followed by Kurt, the queen, future queen, if she survives. We got Robbie, who's Carlos de la Cruz, and then the thugs, because I roll real shitty for them, So, which is great for you guys. All right, I All am right. just going to plow through the crowd. I mean, bull in a china shop, elephant in a china shop, and I want to grab the thug that has the queen using my trunk. I want to. So if he's reaching <laughs> out, I'm like, I'm like wrapping my trunk around his arms. All right. So this is a strength contest. Wait, wouldn't you just pop up into the sky if you went and tried to get her? Oh, I don't. She's, she is out. She oh, is she's out. She's out. Yes, oh, okay, she is gotcha, out on gotcha. your guys' side. Yes. So she has passed through the the arches. She is on your side. You are in a safe area. So yeah, that, that's how I understand. So it. strength contest against this guy. Yep. Got an eight. Wrote a nineteen. So he good. is. Uh, very dexterous as you try whipping your, your trunk around to grab hold of him, and he, he evades you. Okay. Uh, but I assume I'm in melee range with him now? You, you are in melee range, yes. Okay. That is my turn That's for your now. turn. All right, next up we have Kurt. So are any of these guys within five feet of that purple wall? There was another guy that was near you. The two guys that were near you ran towards Maeve. So there is one that is also close by where... She is, but he hasn't yet gotten to her, so he is close to the gate. So, Close to the purple wall? Close to the purple wall, yeah. Okay. You got to remember, it's waist high, too. So like, if you want to hurl somebody over it, like you yeah, don't have to hurl them through a, an arch or whatever. You can just throw, hurl them over the top or something. So. so the type of turret my character drop is an arcane turret. It's a force ballista. So I can tell it to shoot at one of the guys that's right next to the wall, and it'll hopefully push him five feet away and into the wall so he pops up in the air. Okay. I pat on the side because uh, it's got this crane-like neck and this robotic head with gears and everything. Almost like a like a bird-like maw on the top opens up, and I go, "All right, Gracie, get that one." And I point at that one guy, and uh, I'll roll to hit. Ah, for my artificer class, it's just a spell attack, so it is a ten total to hit with that uh that force ballista. Oh, for his armor class, mm -hmm. so it just kind of whizzes right by him and doesn't hit. Okay, so. and we move 15 feet forward. All right. You're at the middle of the two arches on the western side. All right. Do you get a turn as well, or is that just Gracie's turn? Um, you know what? Or? I can... So that's that's my turn is to use an action to command it, but I could still use a bonus action, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to pop out my... I have a, a very special pistol. So for my character, just assume at the beginning of every morning, I enchant my pistol and my armor. And this pistol, it's, it looks kind of like a big, chunky gun, but it's got a lot of gears and lights and everything on it. And I take a crystal from my bag and I jam it into the back of this pistol. And now uh, it is an arcane weapon that does an additional D6. Let's just call it a uh, lightning damage. These are people. People would not like to be lightninged. Nah, I don't think so. All right. Next up is the Maeve, the future queen. Uh, she's going to try and make a check to get out of the grasp of the, the thug that is holding on to her, but she is unsuccessful. 
Uh, and then next up, we have Carlos de la Cruz. So I already pulled out my sniper rifle. I wanted to make sure I had it out before combat started. Mm -hmm. But when I pull it out, I have a small <laughs> case, which I would probably be about a foot by foot, which you would think would be a pistol case. But as I reach into it, think Mary Poppins, because I'm pulling out a six feet long sniper rifle, and it's about as tall as I am if standing side by side. This sniper rifle has three tubes on it. It has uh, one tube is for green gas. The other tube is for red gas. And the other chamber is a mixing chamber and the, also the ignition chamber where it fires a projectile and depending on how much gas i mix into it i can have different effects with my shots so i'm going to take aim at the the guy that is closest to me the one that you want to shoot the one that's holding her yeah or, oh no, I didn't there's know one the holding one. her and there is one that is is running up but uh he's farther away he's not right next to them but you could take a shot at him if you wanted on the opposite side of the room as you i don't know this is a crowded crowded spot Better not hit a civilian boy. Uh, I'll At this point, I would say like civilians have cleared the all area. Right, all right. So <laughs> I'll shoot kinda... the one holding Maeve. If they both get sucked into the purple haze, I think it would be it would work for all right. everyone here. I'm, Don't so, roll a one, dude. Yeah, yeah, scary shot. So I have lucky. I hope. Yeah, I was gonna say you got any <laughs> lucky points over there? Shouldn't none of us got beat. Do it to it. Let's see it. One second. I'm... See, this is what I was waiting for. Just Robbie's turn is all I need Why don't to be we able talk to about have a review. Uh, yeah, I, know, right? Right. I have trick shots, and I'm going to go ahead and use a grit point. When you fire a firearm attack against a creature, you can expend one grit point to trip or force them back, and it forces them back 15 feet. So he's holding on to her. Would he lose grip of her when he's being shot? That's I, up to I you. So yeah, that's I would say he's you. caught off. Some, okay, so let's do it to it. All right. So first, I guess I have to hit him. So 19 to hit. Yep, that's going to do it. And then you make a DC save to see if he gets pushed. 13. DC what save? Dex or? Strength. Strength. Roll a 12. You get pushed back 15 feet. All right. So I will say he is caught off guard, ex not expecting you to shoot him since he is holding the future queen of the Golden Gate. And he just gets hurled back over the top of the... Uh, the waist high cobblestone wall and just freezes up and just floats into the air. Carlos, you lunatic. I'm glad that worked out. I do seven damage to him. I um, mean, yeah, he's, he's basically out of combat right now. Cause he is in the purple haze and floating. Cause he does not have the proper paperwork to be in that area. So, um, so the guy that was the first guy to talk onto his far speech stone. Did I know who that was? Or was that only Matt that seen that? I well, think, only Matt saw that guy. Okay, that's my that's my turn. I shoot that one guy, push him back into the purple haze, and now Maeve is free. All right, it's the bad guy's turn, dudes. Y'all excited? All right. So the one guy that was between Kurt and Go Jimbo, he will then move up and grab hold of the queen, and he is successful in doing so. I'm within your right melee next to range. Okay, correct. Yeah. I have a few things I can do. In fact, this is kind of my jam Ooh. is helping other people in combat if they're in melee range. So actually, I have two different reactions that I can use. My shield, which is the one blue item I was given, actually, can impose or actually I can take any damage that she would take. Okay. And my just normal paladin is uh, ability is that I can impose disadvantage on something within melee range of me. Okay. So I, it sounds like he was trying to grab her, not not. He's not attacking her, her. He just looks like he's trying to grab her. Yeah. yeah. So I'll I'll like as I see him run up there, I will like try and get in his way and like use my shield to fend him off. So I'm going to impose disadvantage on his grab. Okay. Does it have to be an attack roll or a grapple? Um, That's one thing I would. This, he's probably still going to be successful because she will appreciate it. Oh, I rolled a one. So he is unsuccessful in grabbing her. You kind of get in his way, uh, and he just finds this huge elephant creature just, like, blocking his path. Okay. All right. That was his action to try and grab her. At this point, you guys, uh, Casey and Robbie, you will see the leader, what seems to be the leader of the group, shout, kill them. Grab the future queen. All right. And then at that point, the two guys right next to you, Robbie, who are on the eastern side of the wall, they're going to pull out some short swords, and they're just going to go to town on you since you had pulled out your rifle and shot their buddy into the haze. All right, so the first guy makes an attack. 18 hit, Robbie. Yes, yeah, I'm guessing yes. it does. So, all right, 
His first hit, he does three damage to you. He comes back with a second lunge with his short sword, and he just crit. Oh, boy. This is fun. <laughs> He's going to do seven damage to you with that second attack. Okay. All right. And then as his other friend, who is also nearby, he is going to run right up on you with his short sword and do the same exact thing, try and hack you down. He rolled a five for his first attack. I'm guessing that's going to miss. Five plus four. He, he will yeah, miss. He'll miss. Uh, and he rolled a 19. I'm going to stop using that die. Hit. And then he does four damage to you. We see the leader of the group who's located in the center of the room. He is going to run up and actually take a swipe at you, Matt. Mm-hmm. He actually rolled a crit miss. Uh, so I'm just going to use that. He has two attacks, but I'm just going to use it as one. When he swings, he actually clobbers uh, his buddy in the face. Ow. <laughs> so he's swinging a huge mace. He pulls out a huge mace, swings it at him, and he does six damage to him. All right, and it is back up to the top of the order. Matt, it's your turn. I am actually going to cast two spells this round. Okay. One is my action. I'm going to stand up as tall as I can and flap my massive ears, and I'll uh, just roar, run, and I'll point it to the, in the, uh, into the purple mist, and I'm going to cast command. If he fails a wisdom saving throw, which is 11, he has to do my one-word command. And this is on the leader? This is on the leader. Okay. So I have to roll beat an 11? Mm-hmm. Wisdom. Ooh, I rolled a five. So he just like kind of looks really confused and so- sort of starts to like tremble a little bit. And he just like runs into the purple haze and like clinches up and begins to float into the air. And then you see uh, the other, th- the three thugs that are still standing about kind of look concerned because they're, and confused as well because their leader just kind of told them to do, uh, told them to kill you guys and grab the future queen, yet he runs directly into the uh, the purple haze. Perfect. For my second cast, I'm going to cast a bonus action. I'm going to cast Sanctuary on Carlos. You ward a creature in range against attack. Until the spell ends, any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack on a harmful spell must attack or harmful spell. Must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target for the attack. The spell doesn't protect the warded creature from area effects like fireball. All right. Other than that, I will maintain the position I'm at, which is I'm between the remaining thug and the princess. Very good. All right. Kurt, you are up next. Yeah. Uh, like Matt said, there is a thug between, or uh, standing on the opposite side of him and the future queen, and there are two thugs on the far eastern wall right next to your buddy Carlos. So I, I feel like the queen is in between... Me and Carlos, right? Yes. Like, I'm on the other side? Okay. Mm-hmm. Am I within 120 feet of the two guys? Oh, oh. yeah. Absolutely. You could. Okay. All right. So, I, I'm going to assume my, my my captain has everything under control there, but I'm, I'm worried about Carlos. So, I'm going to kind of swing south below them uh, on the back of my turret, move about 15 feet forward, and point it at one of those two guys and say, All right, Gracie, get one of those. And I point my hand, and the big crane-like neck charges up and shoots a big rippling blast of purple energy as I critically hit Woo! one of those guys. Yeah, crit sandwich. Crit sandwich. See if it's a sandwich. Nom, nom, nom. It is not. Ah. <laughs> but that will take 46 instead of 2d6. Seems good. Damn, 4d6. I know. Oh, shit. Wow, that does 2d6 at range. Hold on. Sorry. 2d8 force damage at 120 feet. Not so 2d6. It's, so it's 4d8, right? Or crit? Yeah. It's a ranged spell attack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that was force. a spell? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Was well, like, oh it's, it, that's its attack every turn. Good God. Yeah, that's like a <laughs> that's so great good. sword or something. And it pushes. Jeez, oh, Pete. It's going to do 15 damage and push it five feet away. All right. Um... He is just, he looks like he's on his last leg. Like he is just gasping that he was not expecting that uh, attack to come flying across the room. And with him being pushed back, does Robbie get an, an opportun- a attack of opportunity? No, it has to be a, an act like a movement, not a push. Okay, gotcha. Maeve is going to start running and distance herself between the thug that is right next to Gojimbo. Uh, so she'll disengage from that area and kind of stand on the opposite side of him to position herself in a safer spot. 
Uh, and then next up, we have Carlos. So you've got one guy on you. One guy was just like thrown back five feet. And that guy looks like he is on death's door. Who is the closest one to Maeve? There is a guy that there's just one thug that is closest to Maeve, and he is actually kind of being blocked by Gojimbo. Mm-hmm. That's what Go- Gojimbo does. I will say under my breath, move out of the way, fatty. And then I will shoot the guy that is. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate your, your, your leader, your sergeant here? I yeah. don't hate him. <laughs> your yeah. guy's a jerk. Let's hear an hour background on why this came about. I don't know. I just <laughs> It's more of a joke to myself, like to Carlos to himself. You've got a problem with authority. It's all right. Yeah. 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 So Carlos's rank in the military is specialist, and everyone knows the specialist symbol is a shield. And when I was in the military, the specialists were known as the sham shield. So like I like to I just like to be lazy. That's my guy. He's he's the lazy <laughs> sham shield guy. Sorry to offend any military listening that's a specialist. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to do that today, but here we are. They know. I know. Like, right? I assume they know. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> I am ex-military, by the way. So the guy that is on death's door, I will shoot at him. Roll a hit. Like a 22? Yeah, it's going to hit. You can just describe your... You trying to kill him? What are you trying to do? Because he only had one HP. Has anyone died yet? No, we've Nobody, tossed two Nobody's died. Two of them we got, uh, have gotten tossed into the purple haze. I just knock him out. He has... Does he have any armor on him? Like, can I just knock him unconscious? He's got leather armor, but yeah. You want to knock him out? Yeah, I'll do like a, a, a lot of blue gas mixture in my shot, and it will be more of a concussion shot that shoots a lot of air, and the air will just hit him like a fist and poof, knock him down on the ground. All right, sounds good. All right, is that the end of your turn? So there's two down. There's how many there's left? Two down. Two guys are floating in the purple haze. There's one guy that's down uh, five feet from you. Uh, and there's one guy still on you. I'll take an attack of our two. I'll move. I want to move okay. into to an area where I can see. Like, does the thing that Matt per- cast on me, does it still protect me? Yeah, I would, I would assume so. Yeah. Yeah. They can't target you unless they roll, but they beat a wisdom saving throw. I will not disengage. I will take the app- attack of opportunity. I will move. I want to get into a clear range because I will action surge and do my next shot on the guy that I that I can't see right now. All right, so that guy is going to take an attack of opportunity on you. He's got to pass a wisdom saving throw, and I rolled a six plus one. So got to beat an 11. Not going to work. So, all right. He kind of looks like he's about to swing his, his short sword, and then he just, like, stops for a second, like, what? And then you kind of move 30 feet. How far away do you move? I don't have to get a good angle to be able to shoot this guy. Is he still within 15 feet of the purple haze? Yeah, he's, like, they're, they're kind of, like, right up on it. He's within 15 feet, so... So if you move like down, like kind of towards the entrance, you can get a good angle on him to if you're planning to try and push him back into it as well. Okay, I will action surge do my angled movement where I can get a good shot at him, and I will take the shoulder strap to my sniper rifle, wrap it a few times around my left arm as I move my right arm and I hold my breath to take a shot. Curve the bullet. That's eleven to hit. It's gonna miss. You just see uh, this projectile just fly right path in the direction of uh, the queen, Gojimbo, and a thug. Carlos, you lunatic! I will, (laughs) with my extra movement, since I did use my action surge, I will run over next to, and I will stand next to Maeve and Jimbo. Okay. It is the bad guy's turn now. The thug that is right next to Gojimbo, he's going to pull out his short sword, and he's going to try and take a swipe at you, sir. And I rolled a 20. I crit. Uh, Let's go to the casino after this, boys. That's his first attack. Does nine damage to you? Mm-hmm. Eight plus four, which is twelve. I don't think a second attack is going to hit you. That'll miss. No. All right. And then the guy that tried to make an attack of opportunity against Carlos, he looks still looks confused. You can see him pull out a a crossbow and aim it in the uh, direction of Carlos again to try and hit him. Is this still a wisdom saving throw uh-huh. for him? So he's going to pull out a different weapon. Roll a six. He's, and then he just kind of like looks confused again and just like puts it back in his holster. Like, what, what the hell am I doing? Rethinking his He's life. rethinking his action. Yeah. yeah. He's like, why can't I attack this guy? There's why something so, about him. Why am I so racist? Yeah. <laughs> why, why can't, why? This guy's a human like me. What am yeah. I doing? What's wrong here? So, all right. Back at the top of the order, Matt. I will again try to just move a little bit closer. I don't, I'm going to stay in melee range of this guy, but just move myself in between him and the queen to be. And then I will remove the quarter staff from my back. I'm doing a, a one-handed attack with it on this guy. All right. Roll to hit. I crit. 
Ah, oh, fuck. Man. Crit sandwich. We got a hot, lot of crits going app. on here. No crit sandwich, but yeah. <laughs> I see a one from this distance. I wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> seven damage on a crit. Oh, all right. Had a one and a two on his D8. Rolls. He looks so frightened that the fact that this huge elephant is about to come down on him with this, this quarter staff, but he somehow survives the blow that is uh, thrown upon him. But he also looks like he is on death's door. All right. What's that? Kurt, you're up. I'm going to admit I made a mistake here. When you summon the turret, you decide which type it is, blah, 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 blah. On each of your turns, you can take a bonus action to cause the turret to activate. So I should have been attacking as a bonus action, not as an action action. Oh, okay. So you actually do get a turn. So yeah, I do get a turn as well. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. (laughs) This force ballista is going to charge up another blast and point it at... Is the guy that's right in the middle that everyone's fighting with, is, is he five feet away from that wall? Yeah, he's, he's five feet away from the wall. Okay, so I'm going to aim it at him, see if I can knock him back into the wall. All right, Gracie, get him. And I rolled a 20. That's going to hit. So it's going to be nine damage. He's going to get pushed back five feet. Yeah, he only had three HP. So are you trying to kill this guy? Like, what are you trying to do? I was just trying to knock him back. All it's right. all force damage. His body just flies back and it goes limp and you just kind of see him like hanging like dead weight in the air, like mm-hmm. no emotion in his face whatsoever. And, and he begins to f- uh, f- tighten up and float up into the air. All right. And the other two guys, the guy that's closest to me, how far is he? There's nobody next to you anymore. We have three people floating in the air. We have the leader as well. Or actually, there's four people floating in the air. The leader yeah, and then the three of the thugs that are like floating in this purple haze. And then there's one guy that just seems on the far east, just so confused, not knowing like how to make an attack on Carlos. He seems to be questioning like his every move. He is the only survivor thus far. How far away from me is he? Uh, 90 feet. All right. Well, I can attack with disadvantage with my pistol. There is a guy that I knocked unconscious too. He is on. Yeah, there is one guy unconscious on the floor as well. Sorry. Okay. That is not in the purple haze. That is not in the purple haze. Yeah. So maybe I made a mistake there. So there's one guy upright, 90 feet away. Yep. One guy upright. Oh, even at dis- I got a roll of 20 and a 19 on disadvantage. So Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's going to hit. That's, yeah, that's a 25 to hit. In the very similar fashion, the way that my arcane turret kind of revs up and unleashes a giant blast, my pistol charges up and unleashes a giant blast and does 11 piercing damage and four lightning damage. Oh, this guy is. A little stiff wind could just blow him over. He is hanging on for dear life. He's one HP. So the queen, she is still uh, positioning herself. But, uh, now she'll swing around to the other side, opposite of where that last thug is, around Gojimbo. And Carlos, you are up next. There's one guy left. The guy who doesn't want to hit you. How far away is he from me? I say, uh, thirty. You ran 30 feet from him, so he's 30 feet from you. Okay. I will walk up to him. You walk up to this guy? Yeah, sure. What? I'll just walk <laughs> up to him, and I have my sniper rifle in my right hand kind of pointed to the sky, just kind of resting it, and I'll just look at him, and then I'll kick him. All right. <laughs> Must be easy when you're under sanctuary, and like no one can attack yeah. you. All of a sudden, you're, you're fucking... You're like, uh, oh, I'm invincible. Yeah, all of a sudden, you're Jackie Chan. <laughs> 11? It's a miss, sir. So you go up, <laughs> you walk up, <laughs> Like, like you're a badass. Walk up to this guy. <laughs> I almost gun, pulled it off. Rifle in the air. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Spartan kick this fool to the ground. And you just like kick your foot, and he just like steps to the side, and you just miss. And you guys are just kind of staring at one another. I just kind of nod at him. I'm like, I, you know, sometimes you just can't hit people, and I, I think he understands that. Okay. I thought you were gonna like capture him to interrogate him or something useful. Well, there's knocked unconscious. They always wake back up. We can yeah. ask him questions then. That's true. All right, it is his turn now. And he's Whoops. very sad. Yeah, I want to drop my sanctuary. You now. tried to <laughs> attack him because he's been rethinking his attacks on you. He's going to try and break this wisdom, this hold on him. He rolled a two. So he like pull, rears back his short sword and he just like drops it to his side and it's just like, I can't, man. And just like it's, takes off running towards the entrance. Is it because we're both humans? You. I don't, you don't know. Mm. It's Would because he, of his spell. He can't attack you. So. If he runs away, then Robbie would get an attack of opportunity. Yeah. Now you can probably kick him in the ass. Maybe you'll get a, a chance here for redemption. So he's running away from you towards the entrance. As he turns away to run away from me, I will kick my foot to tr- try to trip him. 
Okay. <laughs> the guy missed it. Like he's tried to swing at me three times. I. But he's, know, he's. I like the it's guy. It's because of a spell. So we're going to say that strength that would be a twenty-one. Are you, you rolling a hit? Hits? Yeah, I thought you were rolling yes, a hit. This is your attack roll. Attack of opportunity. Attack 21. of opportunity. Yes, twenty-one to kick his feet. Oh, from 21? Him. Yeah, that hits him. So you hit him and he falls flat on his face and dies from the impact of the fall. Oh, I feel Ouch. bad for killing him. <laughs> <laughs> he was your best friend. We're uh, gonna spend the rest of the campaign mourning him. Yeah, and we're out of combat. We did it. it. You guys did it. You solved my GGTC puzzle. At this moment, the... I thought it was going to be like a railroad where she does get kidnapped. I was like surprised we stopped you, it. <laughs> well, that was one of the options. Maeve turns to Gojimbo and she says, Thank you. There's no time to explain. We must hurry. I agree. We need to get to a safe location and get you into the... What's it called? Dump truck or something? The dump truck? The, the construct? Con- construct. Uh, yeah. Construct. Carlos. I'm uh, searching the guy's body that I just tripped. Okay. And then I look up and I uh, look at Jimbo. I say, Sergeant! What? What, Sergeant? <laughs> <laughs> he said his name. Yeah, I was like... Carlos, Kurt, to me, we must move. Let's get the princess into the construct and, and get on our way. Before- I'm really tired right now. I need to go sit down somewhere. I'll go sit in the truck. As my construct starts folding back in on itself and I'm grabbing it and, and putting it back away. Of course you don't have to explain, ma'am. It's it's your big day. This is so exciting. Let's get out of here. Okay, yeah. She she nods at you, uh, cracks a uh, small smile, and you all head out to the, uh, the truck. Do I find anything interesting in the guy that I searched? You find a healing potion on the inside. Wow. Do I, do I get to, I get to know his name? A regular healing potion. Did, did he have his name tattooed and like, on said, his body? Or? It says, uh, to Robbie, happy birthday from DM. Yay. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> it's Robbie's <laughs> birthday. Robbie? Just killed Robbie. He killed Robbie. Killed, uh, Carlos killed Robbie. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, he looks exactly like you. Yeah. <laughs> like his oh, mask nice. pops open and it's just your face. <laughs> you. oh, no. This guy is so handsome. <laughs> I wish I would have killed him. Yeah, so you guys head out to the uh, the construct, get prepared to load the Wizard King's uh, fiance into the truck. I think that's where we're going to call it. Uh, tune in for episode two, campaign seven on Crit Sandwich. We did it! Woo! Woo! Did you guys happen to see the review of the guy that liked my detail? I I did see that. <laughs> yes, I did see that. That's funny. And what's funny is I even got more detailed in my character, but we took some of it out. <laughs> there was a, we so it. was it the third one that we just, I think it was the third one that just came out. It was either the second episode or third episode, but it's like Matt, Matt asked the question, how do you guys cast your spells? And Robbie says, well, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but <laughs> <laughs> then he, then he just goes on forever. <laughs> I was just oh, like, man. oh my gosh. <laughs> That's true. <laughs>